infraspinalis. The infraspinalis originates from the infraspinalis fossa of the scapula. It is such the middle facet with great tuberosity of the humerus. And it is responsible for the external rotation function of the shoulder joint. It is innervated by the suprascapular nerve. With the patient seated and the shoulder joint adducted, flexed, and internally rotated, the probe is placed parallel to the scapular spine, and the probe is moved downward. The infraspinous muscle and the tendon can be observed on the scapular glenoid and the humerus head. In general, it is known that the infraspinous tendon tear is the rupture of the supraspinous tendon progresses. However, in patients who have a calcific tendinitis with the infraspinous tendon and have the previous undergone percutaneous needle treatment, caution is required as there is a possibility that infraspinous tendon tear may occur independently even without supraspinous tendon tear. Terrace minor. The terrace minor originates from the lateral border of the scapula attached to the inferior facet of the great tuberosity of the humerus. And it is a muscle responsible for the external rotation of the shoulder joint. It is innervated by the axillary nerve. If the patient is seated and the probe is placed below the infraspinous muscle with the shoulder joint is adduction, flexion, and the internal rotation. The terrace minor muscle can be easily observed within the lateral board of the scapula and the inferior facet of the great tuberosity of the humerus. The way to differentiate between the infraspinous muscle and the terrace minor muscle is to perform a long axis examination of the infraspinous muscle and the terrace minor muscle from the posterior of the scapula. If the articular cartilage of the humeral head is visible, it is the infraspinalis muscle. If the articular cartilage is not visible, it is the teres minor muscle. In addition, on short axis images, the probe is placed along the proximal part of the humerus. Based on the anatomical neck of the humerus, the infraspinous muscle is attached to the proximal part and the teres minor muscle is attached to the distal part. Labrum. Approximately 25% of the humeral head in the shoulder joint is in contact with the glenoid of the scapula. And the glenoid labrum expands the contact area of the shoulder joint and increases the stability. Therefore, damage to the labrum can be caused of shoulder joint instability. Anterior labrum. With the patient sitting and the shoulder joint is abducted 90 degrees and externally rotated 90 degrees. Place the probe below the coracoid process, inspect the interior and the anterior inferior surface of the labrum. It is recommended to perform a dynamic test by applying the anterior draw test and the low test stress test to the shoulder joint. Humeral head, glenoid, anterior labrum. Superior labrum. When the probe is placed the lateral aspect the supraspinous fossa, the superior part of the labrum can be observed. It is recommended to perform a dynamic test by rotational stress test of the shoulder joint. Posterior labrum. Superior glenoid. Superior labrum. Medial end of the acromion. Supraspinatus muscle. The probe is placed parallel to the inferior face of the scapular spine while positioning the probe downward to inspect the posterior part of the labrum. It is recommended to perform a dynamic test by applying the external rotation load to the shoulder joint.